past lecture in unit two, partial differential equations, which would be a fun unit, I think, fun in its class. We design. So the third problem set, just to orient you, would be diagnosing a lot of blood disorders in automated fashion. I haven't made it yet, but I'm going to soon. But uh, based on, um, so I'll probably give you like a database of like a thousand images, and then run through them, GUI or something. Well, first I think you'll use the GUI to figure out sort of image processing settings to diagnose different blood conditions, and then you'll implement them in a for loop. That to figure out for all the thousand images what the possible diagnosis is. That to a test list that I might publish. That ways we'll try and cover some image processing in both the spatial domain and the Fourier domain. I'll talk about what that means in the upcoming. But next week we'll focus on building the actual GUI inside of MATLAB. And in the past, people have found that very useful for their own research. So I think what would be useful is if you get started on the third problem set with that lecture with GUI design, and then as we discuss the image processing stuff, you can incorporate that into your GUI. So, but the second problem set, how's that going? I know you have the midterm next week, so I don't know. The hours, office hours I have to hold next week. Um, but yeah, I think once the and the main is setting up that circuit that I've given. Once you have the circuit set up, then it should be fairly straightforward after that. So, but let me know if there are any problems. We can, like last time, we can hold extra office hours. And stuff. Okay, then, so this is supposed to be, are there, is there, are there any, just generally for me to know, are there people who have questions on problem set two today? Um, okay, so we could also finish early, but okay. So the you guys have done partial differential equations in CME, right? That's what, and how did you do them? You did them just by using ODEs over and over again, or? Wait. But like, how did you implement the partial differential equations? It was just ODEs, and then you joined them all together. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I see, I see, I see. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm gonna talk about PDEPE, box inside of MATLAB, which makes things a little bit easier because it does all of that for you. So hopefully that'll be helpful. Um, it can be used for all sorts of partial differential equations. I'll talk about what it can be used for uh, in a bit. Um, but, so, you know, just generally, if you remember anything about partial differential equations, we have now you have the partial differential equation itself and then you have initial values and then you have boundary conditions, right? And so just generally the syntax, I'm gonna talk about what M is. For the second argument to PDEPE is it's called PDE fun, which is the partial differential equation. Um, IC fun is the initial condition, right, or the initial value. BC fun is the boundary condition. So there are three main such arguments to PDEPE again the actual equation, initial value, boundary condition. And then X mesh and T span. Um, so PDEPE, one limitation of it is it's used for partial differential equations in one space variable. So, and that specified an X mesh, right? So that's sort of your vector of X values for which um, you do partial differential equation, integrate the partial differential equation. Span is your time variable. So one limitation of PDEPE is, as I mentioned, one spatial variable. Another limitation is, um, um, is 
The PE actually stands for parabolic and elliptical PDs. I'm not going to go into what these are, um, but um, it imposes certain limitations on the structure of the equation in PDE fun, and I'm going to show you what that form is. So, is that, are there any questions about the syntax? So th this is just the syntax you call PDE PE, and Sol gives you um, output. Um, can have, you can integrate multiple variables at the same time, just like any, everything else in MATLAB, because everything could be vectors. And I'm going to show an example of that. So, and so basically the way this is working, which is sort of what you did in CME probably too, is that you have a lot of independent, sort of, not independent, but you have a lot of sort of coupled ODEs that you're solving in essence, right? Um, and so it just uses, um, uh, X mesh to figure out all the different spatial points at which you want to sol be solving a time-based integration. So it's, you're going to do a lot of time integrations and then integrate it over space. End of it, it's just ODEs. Okay, so, okay, so let's talk about the uh, parameter M a little bit, which is the first argument in PDE PE. And so there, you basically, um, so if you have, there are three geometries basically that you can use for partial differential equation in PDP. One is slab, so that's just linear, right? So you just think of the diffusion equation. You're seeing the diffusion of a molecule linearly on one axis. Cylindrical, it's, you're seeing it in cylindrical coordinates. And spherical is, you specify M as two, then there's diffusion happening. Um, in spherical coordinates, okay? And so the reason why, um, so again, so this is actually sort of what PDE fun uh, works with. This is the form of the PDE that PDE PE can solve, okay? So I was talking about restrictions on the kind of partial differential equations PDE PE can solve. We talked about one spatial dimension, but also this is the general form of the partial differential equation that can be solved with PDE PE, okay? And so, just sort of how do you intuitively interpret this? This is sort of this C. So firstly, this is C of a function of, C is a function of X, T, U, del U over del X. And then F is a function of the same and S is a function of this. So what does this mean? So think of the diffusion equation again as an example. C is going to tell you, for example, um, um, so if you are solving like 10 different partial, partial differential equations at the same time, which means 10 different variables, C is going to tell you how those different variables are related to each other, for example. Or it's, it's sort of this coupling term. F is a flux term. If you remember Fick's law, this, so F would be, for example, del U over del X, right? In the simple case of Fick's law, in the diffusion equation where you have del C over del T is D times delta C over del X2. So you'll have del over del X of del C over del X, so F would be del C over del X right, just the flux term. And M comes here, so again, remember with spherical coordinates, you have R squared, with cylindrical coordinates, you have R, and with just, Cartesian, with just simple axis, linear coordinates, you have no coefficient here, so that's that. And this is sort of a forcing term, so if you guys remember, like, if you would do the reaction diffusion modeling with the reaction with an elimination term, so that would come here, or like a velocity profile, that would come here, for example, so again, this is the form of partial differential equation that can be solved with PDE PE. Um, any questions about that? So C, F, and S are outputs of PDE fun. Okay, so that's how MATLAB knows this is the partial differential equation I'm gonna solve. Okay? Because that's the only thing that's very, apart from M, that's the only thing that needs to be determined, right? To say this is my partial differential equation is C, F and S, and you're going to tell MATLAB that through PDE fun. Questions about the general form of Do some examples soon, and hopefully that'll be less dry than this stuff, but I need to go through the syntax first. This is just the form of the partial differential equation that PDE are functions of X, T, U, So, so I'm not going to go through this this much, but 
Okay, so let's talk about some other stuff in terms of the other functions involved in this. So we talked about PDE fun, which outputs C, F, S. We talked about M. Let's talk about IC fun. That's just giving you initial values, okay? And so IC fun, this function looks something like, actually I have it here. So IC fun will look something like, you. so of course for IC one, the time value is T naught, the initial time value, right, is an initial value. And so you basically calculate an initial value for every spatial coordinate, right? And so for every spatial coordinate though, if you are integrating like 10 different variables, there are 10 different partial equations, or partial differential equations, then for every spatial coordinate there'll be 10 different initial values. In other words, so if you have 10 different spatial locations and you're working with 10 variables, you'll have 100 initial values, right? One, 10 for each spatial. So for each spatial coordinate, you would be a vector which would be outputted, which would represent all your different variables. That's the general form of IC fun. BC fun is a little complicated and I think best demonstrated through example, but that's the boundary condition function that it has a syntax there. So actually, let's just go to an example. I think that'll, that'll make it much more interesting. Okay, so, so say I have this, I want to model the simple diffusion equation like this, right? Del C over del T is del two C over del X two, right? That's the equation I'm modeling. And here are my boundary conditions. At X is zero, my concentration is one, always. At X is 10, my concentration is zero, so it drops, okay? And then here's my initial value that uh, at X is zero, the initial value is one, but everywhere else the initial value is zero. So what's gonna happen intuitively in the system? You have basically a source at x is equal to zero, right? And that's got a value of one. And everywhere else, every, the concentration is zero. And over time, you know, from the source, things are gonna diffuse. And this is, this is, the geometry of this is just linear. It's not spherical, it's not cylindrical. So we're just gonna, okay? So we're gonna try and put this in PDE, PE format. And so let's look at that. So I'm gonna first specify X mesh and T span, which are my vectors for the spatial coordinate and time. And so I just use linspace to do that. It's convenient to do that in this case. Is everybody familiar with linspace? It just, the syntax of linspace is you specify a starting coordinate and ending coordinate and the number of points you want to generate. Again, this is the syntax for PDE, PE that I call. And so let's look at PDE fun. So PDE fun has these four mandatory input arguments, x, t, u, d, u, d, x. u in this case is concentration, right? And so again, let's go back to the form here. Looking at this form, my equation is del u over del t is del two c over del x two, right? So c is just one, that makes sense. This coefficient is just one here. That's what I have here. My flux term is just, del u over del x, right? That's how I get, get the del 2c over del x2. So my flux, I can just set equal to du over du dx. That's an input argument to PDE fun. And there is no, there is no source term. There's no sort of, uh, yeah, there's no source term or there's no forcing function. So I can set, set that to zero. So that takes care of my differential equation, uh, of my partial differential equation, okay? Let's look at IC fun. I said for IC fun that if you're looking at X at zero, then the value of concentration is one everywhere else at zero. So that's this here, just an if condition. And again, you do, I haven't explored this too much, but I'm sure like we talked about in the lecture two notes with OD45, how these sort of discontinuous conditions can cause problems. In this case, it probably can also. Something that you should feel free to explore. Discontinuities are generally used a lot in partial differential equations. Um, when they become a problem, sort of, I think you have to investigate a little bit. But then boundary, so let's talk about BC fun, which is a little complicated. Um, so boundary conditions at the left and the right need to satisfy, according to the MATLAB sort of convention, this equation. So you have at the left boundary as well as the right boundary, there's going to be a PL and a PR, QL and a QR, right? And this equation needs to be satisfied, which means, for example, that in this case, if my, if my concentration at the left boundary, which is x is equal to zero in this case, is one, I've pinned it at one, then 
<clears throat> this is the again the same flux term as in PDE fund. So Q has to be zero because I don't have any form of del u over f is del u over del x, right? So Q cannot contribute to my boundary condition; it's not there. But P, right, for this equation to hold, must be equal to the f boundary value minus one, and I'll tell you what that means. So the input arguments to BC fun are these four here. So one is the value of the spatial coordinate at the left boundary. This, like, this is the value of the concentration at the left boundary. This is the value of the spatial coordinate at the right boundary, the value of the concentration at the right boundary and time, okay? So when you say PL is equal to UL minus one, then it knows that UL is the value of concentration again at the left boundary, right? So UL minus one is required to satisfy the original equation, which is this one right here, because if, if UL is pinned at one, then UL minus one is just zero, and then this equation gets satisfied. Does that make sense? It's a little bit of a confusing syntax, and I'll go over it again. So for both boundary conditions, this equation needs to be satisfied. F is the flux term, which was the same as in PDE fun, which is del u over del x in the case of this example. So Q must be zero for the left boundary because my left boundary condition is just that the concentration is pinned at zero. There's no del c over del x term. So this is zero, which means that P should be equal to zero now, right, for the left boundary. And to set P is equal to zero, my concentration at the left boundary is one. And to set P is equal to zero, then I have to have P of the form UL minus one or potentially one minus UL. And so, does that make sense? Questions about that? Bit of a confusing syntax. Hopefully you'll see more examples and it'll be clear with that. I'll, we'll be doing five examples. So, PR in this case is at x is equal to 10, there my concentration is zero, so I just write UR there, right? And so again, going back to the same notion, UR would be equal to zero in this case. PR would be equal to zero, right? Because QR is also zero, which means that the concentration will remain the same. I'm just going to run this, and you'll see this over and over again, the BC fun, which will hopefully cl clear up things. So, okay, let's run this. So, okay, so just going back to this, so what would we expect for this simple example? You know, at steady state, this profile is linear in space, right? Because delta C over del X2 is equal to zero, so you'll get a linear profile in space at steady state, right? So, and this is sort of what we observe here, right? But you see how it, this is the time coordinate right here. So at steady state, that's good. So let's move on to another example to further understand how BC fun is working. Before doing that, I want to mention how I plotted this as just using surf. And in surf, you can X mesh T span and then so let's look at the second example. Here I have diffusion with elimination, okay? So my equation has changed, which means that something in PDE fun will change. What will change in PDE fun? Now I have a sourcing term, the S term is there. So I'll just add that. The boundary conditions are all the same. So let's look at example two. I basically changed, that's the only change I think that I've made. The geometry is the same. All I've done is added this S is now minus U, right? because I've added that. So everything else is the same. I run that. So my expectation is that with, with there being this elimination term now, instead of getting this linear profile, that I would depress this profile, right? And the steady state solution is an exponential. It's a sum of exponentials. Um, so that's what I observe here. It, that makes sense. Okay. The steady state solution is sum of exponential because you get delta C over del X2 minus T is equal to zero, which is like a linear second order differential equation, homogeneous constant coefficients, right? That's sum of exponentials. Okay, let's look at another example where now I have an impermeable barrier at the end at X is equal to 10. So instead of having C of X is equal to 10, my boundary condition is in terms of C prime or the derivative. So I'm saying that there's no flux happening at the boundary. That's what my uh, boundary condition has become now. And so the equation is the same as in the case of example one. 
The only ex change I would expect in example one, there was a linear profile at steady state. That linear profile is clearly not going to hold anymore, right? Because here, in the case of a linear profile, I still have some flux at, at x is equal to 10. It's always, a gradient always exists. So now I'd expect when I impose this new boundary condition that the gradient would flatten out, right? Does that make sense? Does that make sense generally? If you want me to repeat stuff, I'm happy to. Quiet today. Um, so, so example three, we're just, um, right, so we have the same boundary conditions as in problem one, and the same PDE fund. The only difference here is that we have, have, a new, sorry, we have, sorry, actually, we have new boundary conditions, so I can teach you what PDE fund is. So now I've changed the boundary conditions, if you see, as opposed to example one, where at the left boundary, which it was x is equal to zero, I still have the same boundary condition, so that's why the PL and the QL are the same, right? I'm still saying that the concentration is pinned at one. But at the right boundary, instead of saying that the concentration is pinned at zero, which was the case here, I'm now saying the derivative is pinned at zero respect to space. So I've changed this here. You can see now PR is zero and QR is one. And why does, that make, why does that make sense? Again, going back here, this is the boundary condition equation at the left boundary. My, again, my F is just del C over del X or del U over del X. So now if I make Q as one and then P as zero, then it's telling MATLAB, okay, now del C over del X is zero at this right boundary. That's how that boundary condition comes. That's how this is working. Hopefully this gives you a little bit more insight into what these boundary conditions are. So now let's run this. Again, very similar. So now you can see here, sort of this is the plot. And so what's happening here is that this concentration profile at you know spatial coordinate zero is pinned at one, as I specified in my left boundary. But over time, instead of taking this linear path that I was taking earlier in the first example, I'm sort of flattening out my curve. So here, the derivative with respect to space has become zero. That's what I wanted, right? Because I said that the flux, so at x is equal to 10, which is what's happening, this is, the surface is becoming flatter as we're going along. And so another way to, okay, intuitively, what does this mean? Why is this so much higher as compared to example one? Any thoughts? Why are the concentrations so much higher? Exactly, nothing is diffusing out of the system. Right? So you have this defined area of space and all your materials sitting in there, so every, all the concentrations are gonna go up. Okay, uh, fourth example. So let's now change the geometry, right? So far we were working with linear geometry. Let's look at an example in spherical coordinates. So let's say that you have a cell inside a bath, right? And you're looking at this, the bath has some nutrient and you're looking at how this nutrient is going to diffuse through into the center of the cell. And the cell is a sphere. And what other assumptions do engineers make? Uh, the but yeah, so there, there's first order elimination happening of a nutrient. Okay, so this is the this is the partial differential equation, right? Right, we get. Right? Um, and so I have a specific value for the elimination constant here, which is 0.1. Um, but so again, how do we code this in MATLAB? Example four. So one change I've made is m is now two to represent spherical coordinates, right? And my my PDE fund is similar to example two, which was when we were looking at elimination. My initial values are still similar, except the only thing I've changed is earlier, at x is equal to zero, my initial value is one. Now at x is xf, which is 10, because I'm looking at this bath, right? The bath is sitting at the end at x is equal to 10, and stuff is diffusing in. And all the previous examples, stuff was diffusing from inside out. In this case, stuff is diffusing from outside in, okay? The boundary conditions are, in this case, that on the left boundary, which is x equal to zero, I've, my derivative is zero. At the center of the cell, there's no flux, right? Everything converges in. And at the right boundary, you have a pinned up concentration. Your bath is at a constant concentration, okay? 
if you run this, then you get something like this. From the bot going to the center of the cell, you get profile with elimination. Okay. Questions? And the last example I want to talk about is to start up talking about coupling. So I mentioned this matrix here, which could be start, which could be thought of as a coupling matrix. You could have multiple variables at the same time, right? And so let's look at a simple example where we're again, it's the same as example two. You're, so you're having diffusion with elimination, but I'm so say this was happening from the blood. So this was representing, say, the blood chamber, and when this stuff is getting eliminated, all it's being it's being eliminated as being taken up by cells. That's what it means. So it's binding to a receptor and being taken up. And you also want to model the concentration in the cells over time. And say you don't know any other thing, but you know that, you know, so this would represent, for example, del CB over del T is equal to CF, which is that the elimination happening from the blood and going into the someone could just a little bit confusing because B here doesn't mean cell uh, blood, but cells. So you're having del CB over del T is CF, which means that stuff is getting eliminated from the blood into tissue, for example, and getting accrued in tissue over time. We haven't modeled an elimination term in tissue, but you could put in another term if you wanted to do it. Right? So but the main point of showing this example is to say how you could have coupling um, with two, how could you model two partial differential equations, two variables at the same time. And so again, this is geometry is linear in this case. And so what we're going to do here now is PD, fun, all of these become vectors. So x, u, du, dx, they become vectors. So u, the u of 1 would represent cf, and u of 2 would represent cd. Similarly, du, dx of 1 would represent del cf over del x, and du, dx of 2 would represent del cb over del x, and so on. So when you specify cf and s, you just have to be careful of that. c in this case are both 1s, because the coefficient of both these time derivatives is just 1. F, the flux for the first case, right, again, going back to this is the previous examples we've done, except we'll now have the indexing of 1, right? And the flux in the second case is 0. There's no spatial derivative involved, okay? And the sourcing term in this case is minus u1, and it's plus u1 in the second case. So that's how I set up PDE fun. And again, I specified the boundary condition, the initial conditions I used here, and I just specified them in these functions here too, right? So I do that, and so now I'm going to plot both of these variables over time. This profile you've sort of seen before, right? This is pretty much the same as example two, what we did, but now I also want to look at this new variable which represents going into the tissue, and this is, you can imagine what's happening here is there's no elimination happening from the tissue, so stuff is going to just keep go growing with time, right? You're just accruing stuff with time, which is what this shows. Everything is, at every spatial location, you're just having more and more. All you're having is stuff going out from the blood into tissue. So this way is, so what are the, just to summarize, what are the examples we've covered? Or an example of some so first we've done linear geometries with all, both types of boundary conditions, um, trade off um, specify, specifying the concentration versus specifying the derivative. We've looked at um, how to incorporate sourcing terms like elimination. We've looked at how to change the geometry. We've made it spherical and seen what happened in that case. And then we've also looked at how to like have multiple variables and how to couple partial differential equations. So you can do all of this in PDEPE as long as your partial differential equation satisfies this form. And I told you the syntax of the, how to specify the initial conditions, the boundary conditions. Um, the final thing I want to talk about is that um, the LSQ curved with ODEs, you could also do an get experimental profiles, you could start fitting them, right? And so you can imagine that this is as amenable to nesting as ODEs. I surround that is very similar. Uh, put x as, so x is already a vector. So actually, I think in MATLAB there's a special tool called PDE tool. It's an 
another toolbox, it's not PDTE, which I think most people use for doing, it's actually a GUI, but I don't think it comes with, you'll have to check whether it comes with your version of MATLAB or not, but you can use that to set up 2D space. I don't think you can do that from within PDETE. This is one dimensional. Yep, so but you have also in PDPE, at the end of T-SPAN you can specify some options, just like you specify options in ODEs, they're actually the same. All right. Um, about Any questions about setting up these boundary conditions? Does that make sense? It's, it's I think, the most confusing part of this entire Exactly, exactly. About figuring out what values of P and Q would give you the boundary conditions. I mean, the initial conditions are much simpler to specify, right? It's just which spatial coordinate, what initial value you want. Uh, boundary conditions are a little bit complicated. PD fun, PD fun makes sense too, how to set up CEFNS, does that make sense? All the examples are posted so you can take a look at them. Uh, but yeah. You guys have done all these, like, I'm sure at some point you've done, like, there's a transport class that you guys probably have to take, no? A transport class, transport phenomena, reaction. But, like, re reaction diffusion models and some, you must have done them to some degree, right? Like, but, like, these. Oh, yeah. Okay. I mean, I can talk generally about these profiles if people are interested. I mean, this, I said, so, of course, the time-based solution is complicated to arrive at, but the steady-state solution, this was for the first example, makes sense that it's linear. Just a second derivative set equal to zero, so you'll have something linear. In this case, at the elimination term, it was you know, differential equations you did, second-order linear differential equations, homogeneous, right? Those are sums of exponentials of solutions, or they could be oscillating, but in this case, it's just simply and so this sort of the sharpness of this profile would be a function of the elimination constant such that if I go back to my example two and I increase the elimination a lot, right, which I can do here, so I can just make this 10 times the elimination here. And then if I run that, then I'll get a much sharper profile, which would be great, right? So that's what governs that. And then Third example that we were looking at, and the fourth example where we had like derivative-based boundary conditions, the idea there again is that not, you're not so much worried about the concentration, but worried much more about the derivative, the flux sort of becoming zero as specified. So that figure three, for example, here, where we had this case where um, John mentioned that we have stuff is not diffusing out. Uh, so that's why you have this increase. If you put an elimination term, you would expect things to go down, but still, again, the main point would be that at this boundary, flux is going to become zero. Which, uh, so this is for example three, the impermeable barrier yeah. one? Yeah. So it's right here, so yeah, so the flux, it is exponential. Well, is it? The profile should actually at steady state be solve this, right, actually. So you'll have your profile, 
is going to look like Cx is Ax plus B, where A and B are some constants. And so I said x is equal to 0, so b must be 1, right? Because that x is equal to 0, the concentration is 1, okay? So I'm left with Cx is Ax plus 1. Then I have, I take the derivative of this expression, which is just a, then that's equal to zero. That x is equal to 10, right? So a, so a is zero, then that Well, I mean, this is only at steady state that at steady state you would expect, I mean, this profile holds at steady state, right? So at steady state, A would be zero. That you just get a flat line. And, right, so like you have, an, you have an infinite source at x is equal to zero, so stuff is not getting diluted out there, and it's impermeable at the other end. So everything is going to just approach one by the end. You run this run figure three, right? If you run this long enough, let's go to example three. So if I run this for instead of t, I say run it for a thousand for a thousand time points. Oh. Does that answer your question? Yeah. So you could do, yeah, so I don't, so scope is a very, it's like an oscilloscope, it's supposed to be, which is not the most useful. No, it is very useful, but not the most. Um, you can just use two workspace. Okay. We talked about the two workspace block. Yeah. I bought it in that file. Does that, does everybody remember that, the two workspace block? Scope is not behaving properly. And they took so long to even add like a direct auto scale button to the two. I think some of the versions of MATLAB that you guys are using still doesn't have that. You have to like right click and auto scale. You don't see anything unless you auto scale. Yeah, is there exactly? Yeah, the second problem set, I mean, it'll be. I think it's supposed to be, you will know when you have the right answer, pretty much. That's the whole idea. It's, you've seen a PV loop in the cardio lecture, and all the, the I basically gave a Wikipedia link in the, uh, in the prompt set, and when you make the changes for simulating different pathologies, your PV loop should look exactly like what you get in those pathologies. Okay. Okay, um, if I had significant comments, I would probably meet with you and tell you. Otherwise, you did great. Most people did great. So. Uh, you will. I mean, I'm working on it. It's slow because I'm trying to meet as many. If, you're, if I've not sent you an email by now, probably means you did fine. 